Hey there everybody, Pete Pardo here. Welcome to another edition of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. Today, probably the most requested new release show that I can think of in recent memory on Sea of Tranquility. It's amazing how many people, I mean, the album just came out last Friday. Uh, I've probably gotten 50 to 100 people who either, you know, tried to message me, email me, or post comments on various videos here on YouTube. When are you going to review the new Deep Purple album? Whoosh! And I, I've said to everybody, it's like, you know, guys, how I operate here. I like to have a physical copy of everything that I own. And I don't do, generally speaking, I don't do review shows of stuff unless I have the CD to show. So I've just been waiting for it to arrive. I've had a digital, digital copy for a number of weeks now. And I you know, know the album fairly well, but I wanted to wait till I got this in. So it's in. Just showed up like a half hour ago. And I've been listening to it once again, I figure, you know what, time for a review here on the channel. So, this is uh, Deep Purple Whoosh, 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 however you want to say it, produced by Bob Ezrin. This is his third album in a row producing Deep Purple. Of course, follows up Now What and Infinite. And uh, let's take a look at this uh, booklet here. And of course, this is on, uh, what, Edel, Edel Music, Ear Music, depending on where you live. Okay, so... Here we have the album, CD booklet, I should say. All the lyrics are here. Nice shot of the band there. Okay, so of course, Deep Purple being at this point in time uh, Ian Pace, Ian Gillen, Roger Glover, Steve Morse, and Don Airy. Same lineup that's been together now for quite a while. And uh, for those of you who are stumbling upon this video and, and you're saying, Deep Purple, I, don't even, I didn't even know they're still making new music. Uh, yeah, they've been making new music. Uh, they never really stopped making new music except in the late 70s. I mean, they've been busy since they got back together in 84. They have been nonstop. So uh, where have you been? All right, so uh, again, this is the third album with Bob Ezrin in the producer's chair, and uh, a very enjoyable album. Uh, I'll leave it up to you guys of whether you think that this, or how this stacks up to the two previous Bob Ezrin produced albums, or how well it stacks up to the Steve Morse era, which has now been going strong since like around 1995 or so, starting with Perpendicular. So we've got a, a long list of albums now in the Steve Morse era. Quite, quite a lot of really good ones. So let's take a look at the album here. So on the CD, it's, they got separated into Act 1 and Act 2. Uh, a lot of tracks on the album. 13, as a matter of fact. So it's a, just under an hour. Uh, most of the songs are between 3 and 5 minutes. Nothing here is relative, you know, too long. Uh, good songs. A lot of good stuff on here. So let's talk about first, uh, there's the rockers, right? So it's Deep Purple. So of course, you know, Deep Purple is a hard rock band. I know I've, I've seen some people in, in recent days looking at reviews on the on various places on the internet and people are like, oh, they're not heavy anymore and blah, blah, blah. Guys, they're in their late 60s, early 70s. Uh, they still rock pretty hard considering. But if you're looking for, you know, in rock or machine head, I mean, they're not that band anymore, right? Doing, you know, I still think they're pumping out some great music, all things considered, 50 some odd years later, right? Uh, the Rockers on here. So the kickoff track, and I believe was the first single, is Throw My Bones. Excellent song. Good guitar riffs, swirling Hammond organ, uh, nice guitar solo, great vocal from Ian Gillen. Great song that starts off the album. <clears throat> Drop the Weapon, another cool soon, kind of, another cool song. Kind of bluesy, kind of funky. It's got good groove. You know, Ian Pace and Roger Glover just blasting away there. Really like that a lot. Uh, We're All the Same in the Dark is a very cool tune. And again, it's got lyrics that kind of really hit home with all that's going on in the world right now. About how we're all the same. right? We're all the same. Never mind the color of your skin or never mind the matter you know, what sex you are, all that kind of stuff. We're all the same. We're all just people. <clears throat> and, you know, you got Ian kind of... Uh, doing a little tongue-in-cheek stuff in the lyrics, but another really good rockin' song. Again, you know, Don Airy, on a good chunk of this album, he's got the... <clears throat> excuse me. I need a little bit of my tea. Don Airy's, you know, roaring away on the Hammond organ, doing some cool stuff with Steve Morse on here. Uh, nothing at all is the first... You know, the first uh, three songs are all rockers. Uh, nothing at all is a little bit different. A little more... 
a little more playful melodic. It's got this really cool Steve Morse kind of like almost like Celtic type guitar lick at the beginning, and it runs throughout the song. If you follow Morse in like the Steve Morse band, he's done similar type things before. Kind of cool to hear it within the Deep Purple uh, framework here. And then you've got uh, No Need to Shout, which is a snarling heavy rock tune with some great riffs from Morris. I think this album, there's more riffs on this album than I think on the last two. I know, and I talked to Steve, you know, a month, month and a half ago, and, you know, he's he has said that Bob Ezrin tries to, you know, kind of contain him a little bit on the three albums they've worked with him, and, I, you know, you, you get the get the feeling that Steve is a little frustrated by that, but I think he gets ample room here to solo and unleash some cool, memorable riffs, and uh, I like this album because of that. So No Need to Shout, very cool, riffy song. I'm not nuts about the kind of little honky-tonk piano thrown in by Airy. One of the things I, I, I don't like, especially in Deep Purple music, is that kind of like boogie, you know, my buddy Martin Popoff calls it barroom boogie honky-tonk piano type of thing. And it's, it's like there's a couple tunes where Don's doing that here. I'm not big on that, but I think overall No Need to Shout, really good heavy rocker, one of the heavier tunes on the album. Then you got uh, Step by Step. So there's a couple tunes on this album that are a little, they're almost kind of like outliers. They're a little bit different. And Step by Step is one of them. It's just kind of this weird kind of moody, slow number, <clears throat> kind of plodding, kind of ominous sounding. For me, it never really goes anywhere. Uh, you know, and that, that finishes off Act 1, okay, which I guess if you have the LP, that's the end of Side one of the LP, uh, for me, Step by Step is the weakest track in the first half of the album. It just, I don't know, it just hasn't grabbed me yet. It's just kind of slow and just kind of meanders along, and I, I don't know, just not a lot of fire to it. Not terrible by any means. Uh, then you got uh, What the What, which without a doubt is my least favorite song on the album. That is just this kind of like boogie rocker that just doesn't really sound like Deep Purple, and it just, to me, it just sounds... Not very indicative of what you normally would get from them. Does it sound like they're having fun playing it? Yeah, uh, but that's not that's for me. That's not how I want Deep Purple to sound. So for me, easily the two weakest tracks here are Step by Step and What the What. And ironically, they come one after the other. All right, but the Long Way Round, another killer hard rock gem with some killer and amazing trade-offs between Morris and Airy. I think they're working very well together on this album, which is good. And Ezra has given them uh, plenty of freedom to do some uh, really cool things together. Uh, you've got The Power of the Moon, which is another one of those really different songs on this album that, that just kind of vary from the formula, but I think it really works here. So this is this kind of like atmospheric, kind of proggy number, kind of dark and moody. It's got this really interesting like spoken word vocal from Gillen. And... Uh, it just really, really works for me in a way that step by step doesn't work. And I think uh, the power of the moon is kind of the like, kind of like little mini prog epic. I think it's like five and a half minutes long uh, on this album. A lot of nice keyboard textures from Don, and I think it's just a, a very well crafted, like I said, atmospheric song on this otherwise very upbeat and lively album. Next, we've got uh, Remission Possible. There's a couple instrumentals on the album which made me very happy. So Remission Possible is absolutely fantastic. It is a Don Airy and Steve Morse fest. The two of them shredding away around each other, next to each other, doing battle the whole nine yards. I want more of this, please. I would love to hear a couple more songs in this fashion. I would love to hear a Steve Morse and Don Airy solo album, or the, you know, the two of them do an instrumental album together. That's how much Remission Possible is great. And then you got, of course, you got Pace just locked in a groove underneath, you know, Glover right there. With I just love it. And it's only, it's like just under two minutes long. I wanted more. I wanted more. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, then you got Man Alive, which is a smoldering kind of like bluesy, funky rock tune, right? That's got some really, really good uh, Hammond organ. Just, it just kind of smolders and simmers percolating very very cool lots of groove dig man alive a lot and then you got and the address and i remember like as soon as the first time i heard this i was like wait a second i know that song uh and the address of course is a remake of 
and the address from the very first Deep Purple album going way back to 1968, Shades of Deep Purple. Uh, done very, very well. You'll know as soon as you hear it, you know, dun, 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 dun. It's just, and Morse does a fantastic job, and it's really cool to hear Morse and Airy uh, side by side on this really cool jammy tune with a great riff. You know, it's got a great groove. Awesome, very cool uh, to hear that. And that actually ends Act 2, but then there's a bonus track, which is a song called Dancing in My Sleep, which Another song that's got plenty of kind of bluesy rock groove, a little bit of funk in with this kind of like, you know, real sly lyrics and vocals here. Uh, just a really, really cool song. And, uh, you know, another one to really look for on this album. It's, it's listed as a bonus track, and it's, it's a damn good one. So, so there you have it. So for me, two songs I don't really kind of care about much. But again, you know, I've... I've just got the disc. I've had the download for a couple of weeks, so you know it's got a, the album. Obviously, has to kind of like sink in a little bit more. But I've listened to it, you know, at least like seven, eight times already. So uh, I dig it. Like I said, two tunes out of the thirteen. I'm not nuts about the rest of it. I like quite a bit. So uh, you know, Deep Purple. Whoosh. Uh, haven't written up my review for the on the website yet, but uh, chances are this is probably going to be at least a four out of five, if not slightly higher. We'll see. But uh, easy four out of five. So, uh, you know, how it stacks up to the, you know, the Steve Morse era albums. As you know, if you've been following this channel, following me, following the website, uh, I'm a big fan of Perpendicular and Abandon and Now What and Infinite. Uh, I like Bananas. Okay, I like Rapture of the Deep. Well, I really like all the Steve Morse era albums. Uh, where this one stacks up, again, it's kind of too soon to say. Uh, I think based on... Just having this for you know a little while, uh, I still think now what is my favorite of the Bob Ezrin albums. Uh, I like Infinite a lot. We'll see how much I like this one compared to Infinite. I don't know if um, this one's going to kind of resonate with me as much as Now What, because Now What for me is right up there with Perpendicular as one of the best of the Steve Morse era. Um, but I like this a lot. I mean, it's it's Deep Purple. It's got the you know the. the great Hammond organ. It's got the sizzling guitar riffs and licks. It's got Ian Gillen telling his his strange little stories. It's got the amazing rhythm section of Pace and Glover. Uh, I dig it. And I, the production is, is very, very good. Uh, as, as you know, always with uh, Bob Ezrin. So, there you have it. Whoosh by Deep Purple. If you haven't gotten it, I would say go out and get it. Um, it's definitely going to rank pretty high for me, I'm sure, uh, at the end of the year. When we put our list together, uh, you know, so far, you know, there's, um, well, we're past mid-year already now. So, you know, the New Testament, the New Kansas, those are some a couple of the ones that are, man, have just been playing constantly all year that I know are going to rank pretty high. So we'll see. This will probably be up there somewhere, I would assume. Uh, but uh, obviously we have quite a few more months to go. So uh, curious to see what you guys think uh, who have the album, who've heard it, and I'm just warning you now, if you're going to be someone who's going to post something in the comments like Deep Purple stopped being a band in 1977, uh, I mean, come on. It's like, if you haven't given any of this stuff a chance, then don't comment like that. It's, you know, I mean, I, I get the the Blackmore love. Blackmore's my favorite guitar player of all time. But you know what? They've made a lot of good music since he left the band. And that was a move that had to happen for him and for the band. So, I, you know, it's it, just to, to not kind of except that this band has been, you know, an active band and putting out very, very strong music, I think is, is you know, got to open, open your eyes up, people, a little bit. So, uh, yeah, whoosh, check it out. Visit us on the web at www.catranquilly.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be listening to some more Deep Purple. So uh, stay tuned. We've got more stuff coming up tomorrow, the next day, tonight. Uh, well, actually, not tonight, but uh, I, I made a mistake earlier today. Uh, the Alter Bridge and Arena ranking the albums shows with Stephen Reed are coming up on Thursday, not today. I got kind of my schedules mixed up a little bit. So that'll be Thursday evening. So look for those. Uh, Jeff Young's coming on the show tomorrow. Jeff Young and I are going to do Deep Cut Dives with The Who and with Chicago, the Terry Kath era. And for a couple of you who asked questions, they're like, Pete, we haven't seen a deep cut dive show in two days. Um, yeah, I'm going to be doing them a little bit less. I'm still going to be doing them, but I'm not going to be doing them five days a week going forward because I think uh, 
I'm kind of looking to move on to other other topic areas and other show formats, but I still have a bunch that I want to do, but I'm going to spread them out a little bit. So we're going to be doing every day. You're going to be seeing the uh, DVD Blu-ray concert film recommendations because we had a lot of people asking for that during COVID, right? People can't see live music. What do I recommend that you watch uh, you know, on YouTube or on Blu-ray DVD or what have you? So that's what we're going to be doing like every day for you know Monday through Friday for the foreseeable future. Um, but uh, a lot of cool stuff coming up uh, with just... Confirming with Martin Popoff, who's joining me on Deep Cut Dive of ACDC on Friday. We got a really cool rant we're working on for you next week, so stay tuned for that. I'm not going to kind of divulge it yet. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the ranking the albums of Amorphous with Nick Franco. He's coming back in about two weeks, and we're going to do the catalog of Enslaved, one of the uh, great Norwegian progressive black metal acts, whatever you want to call them. They kind of defy categorizations. That's coming up next from Nick and myself. So as you can see, a lot of stuff happening. Oh, and uh, Chris Allo and I are going to do a deep cut dive into Saxon. We haven't just set a date yet. It was supposed to be this week. i got to get in touch with him. might be early next week. We'll see. So stay tuned. A lot of stuff coming. So we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.